All right. Damn. We, are, <laughs> we <laughs> exactly. We are back. I am Manslave, and along with me is <laughs> this possible human duty. And we are the duo that runs the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, <clears throat> where we talk about issues regarding gender and the double standard of treatment between the genders and the overall inequality and the need for an elite MIGTO philosophy of men going their own way and just hit the reset switch on gender relations, you know? Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to, um, to show those videos um, to really bring us into this subject matter because, oh, I tell you, this is very personally important to me and the disposable human doing uh, because of what we've experienced and what we've seen other people experience. Now, we're going to talk about our personal experiences and how this affects us and men in general. And um, the disposable human doing doesn't want to make this video too long, but you know what our reputation is, um, especially on very important subject matter and our level of detail we go into. Um, so what did you think about that, uh, so what did you think about that video when, that you just now saw? That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. And this is a fucking news report. Yeah, it's just, the fucking, a fucking four-year-old, really? Like, my, my, now. And then, and then after, they don't even drop the, the charge of sex harassment that, inappropriate <laughs> condo. Mwah. Like, he's fucking four years old. What yeah, he doesn't hell? know any better. He doesn't know any better because he's four years old. Yet, he, because of his gender, he is expected to. It's not even knowing any better. It's a hug. Like Exactly. It's a fucking hug. And then the other thing, the fucking, the, the, the two kids that fucking actually got sent to jail. Like, obviously jail and prison are two different things. But, you know, but a juvenile detention yeah. center, which is basically jail for kids. Yeah, and uh, they had to do that, and the, the chicks didn't even get called in. They were just all like, <laughs> it's pretty funny that it happened. Like, I know they weren't being they weren't being cunts, but, like, to them, they think it's funny because it's so ridiculous, like, that someone would make such a big deal of it, like... They, like they're, they're basically laughing at it like we would, yeah, and for the like, same are, reason, Are you right? fucking serious? This actually happened? And those two kids just basically, you know, have to go... Spend what two nights in jail? That that's that's too much, even for fucking kids. Like those no, those kids had to be like twelve or thirteen. And you know what? You know what I've been wanting to say is those boys, their lives are now fucked yeah, up now. Yeah, exactly. Because they're they, fucked. They, I heard about you being a sexual molester when you were young. And you know what? I can assure you, these boys wanted to eat a bullet. Probably, I mean, he he knew like he, he even said you know he's throwing up. Probably was crying. And probably felt like well, he said I believe he said he was crying. He he, was, he threw up the first two nights. He yeah. was so upset, and it just it's that bullying. It, it is bullying, and see, it it this is part of the problem. All this fucking phobia, fear mongering, fucking bullshit. And then the fucking, oh my god, the fucking sympathy, the, the sympathy craving, all the fucking drama, like, there is a system, a social system that enables, encourages, and thrives upon the shit that we just saw in this video. I mean, and the girls... Why weren't they brought, why, you know what, why wasn't the whole school brought in that fucking courtroom? Because apparently everybody plays that fucking game. I highly doubt it's just four kids. And I'm sure it's not the whole school either, but it's probably more than, more than two. It's definitely more than four. So why didn't they just bring everyone in? Because everyone's guilty of the same thing. And, I mean, really... I mean, like that guy at the end of the video, the, the guy narrating it, because I'm assuming... Because like, they're easy targets. Yeah, I'm sure he's the guy that runs the Violent Women Among Us YouTube channel. Uh, what, what it sounded to me, it sounded like one of the people that was in the courtroom. 
No, no, I think because it, it sounded like it was added in afterward. Um, and uh, I don't mean on the video of the. I mean it sounded like because they had a whatever a video of the procession happening in the court. It might have been a clip from that. It might be the guy who runs this, the. It might be the guy yeah. who runs this, but it could be someone in the court taking place. Like not not at that moment. But it might be a clip taken from it. Okay, because because uh, I thought it was basically you know the guy who runs this YouTube be, channel was getting his good. final say where he says, as you notice, both you know boys and the girls are doing the butt slapping on butt slapping day, but only the boys went to jail for it. It sounds like something that they do that in the channel. Anyway, <clears throat> the point is, um, the person who was talking about clearly. Was, yeah, he understands, and he was he was pointing out the double standard. I mean, like, and I mean, like the girls had no consequences at all. No, nope. and then and then the dudes who were doing the same thing as the girls, their lives are you know their lives got fucked over because of that. I mean, and like, to fucking emotionally scar them like that at such a fucking young age. Yeah, and like hopefully that that. Four year old kid was too young to know what actually happened, or but, to remember it, but because yeah, he's gonna be fucked. Yeah, because if he remembers it, then he's gonna be pretty devastated. Oh yeah, to find out later, by the yeah. time he's our age, oh, and yeah, to find out that he... that he got fucking in all this trouble, and then you know because he hugged somebody, a teacher of all things, a fucking teacher, who if anything should should like, I mean. For one thing, teachers should know that that like you know it's it's a fucking four year old kid. Two, why would even if you know she perceived it? I, I don't know. I just <clears throat> what kind of teacher would would report that for one thing? Because I I I highly doubt that a four year old kid was like tits, like what would a four year old? He kid... would exactly. He wouldn't even know what they are. Exactly. And even if he did, he's probably used to being around his mother, where it's perfectly acceptable to. To, you know, you know, it's a mother and a son. Whenever they're that young, it, it's just, you know, you know what I mean. It, even if it was just, you know, may, but I, I, I highly fucking doubt that the kid had any bad intentions. <clears throat> exactly, and this this system is so fucking oppressive to me. And men. I really hope that the fucking teacher wasn't the one that reported it because what kind of fucking idiot would report that? Yeah, that that's that's like, a very well, low. Well, this kid needed sexual harassment. I mean, either so, a bitch needed really needed a fucking need that is a, fucking she, low. Either she really needed some attention, or someone else reported it. But how did it even get brought to anyone's attention? I mean, a fucking four year old kid. Yeah. Um, but th- th- this system is so fucking oppressive, and nobody sees it. You know what this reminds me of? This is like the fucking pre-crime that goes on yeah. in Minority Report where nobody cares. Everybody turns a blind eye to it because they think that it's 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 making progress and making everything great yeah. and making society safer until it fucking happens to you. Yeah. And, and when you're fucking framed because there's a flaw in the system and then your life is totally fucked. Yeah. And then and you that, realize the system... And that's what this video is going to be about. Exactly, because our lives have been fucked over. And, I mean, <clears throat> I, I will tell you from personal experience exactly what these young boys in that video felt. Um, they probably hated themselves. Mm-hmm. They were probably shocked. I, they don't know much about guns, but if they were old enough to know much about guns, I assure you they would want to eat a bullet. Uh, and this is what it does to most men who are accused Whenever, of such a crime. I mean, yeah, I mean, even even if you're not, I mean, it's bad enough for what they're accused of. Just imagine what it would be like to be accused of, uh, you know, all the all the men that are falsely accused of rape. And I have been falsely accused of uh, taking advantage of a girl while she was asleep, which... This isn't just something that I can easily just explain in five minutes. This will take a while to, to set up the scenario. But basically, well, no, I can't even say basically. I'm going to have to tell the story from the beginning. That's fine, that's fine. But 
anyway, this this thing happened, and it really just kind of. I mean, I've already considered myself to be woke up, but this really just made me even more like it's like when you're asleep and you jerk, you know, like out out of a dream or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like because it's like. You wake up all of a sudden frightened and terrified. Yeah, like, even, even, even if you know these things, you literally cannot let your guard down for even a split second, or it can immediately be Or for down. any reason. No. So, anyway, right now the situation has pretty much, like, been, I guess you could say, maybe we're in the eye of the storm right now, and it's all calm, or maybe it's just calmed down overall, but I'm really nervous about um, the outcome because basically this woman has all the power right now to do whatever she wants to regarding my life. If she decides, you know, um, I could get in trouble, even though what I did was honestly, like, not a big deal at all. Um, and, you know, you could argue regardless of whatever, but I'm going to tell the story or whatever. That's uh, fine. Anyway, well, I'm, I'm leading up to it, but... Whenever this thing happened, the first thing that came to mind was, was if this if this gets out, and it which okay if this gets out, my life is 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 as as I know it is over because it doesn't matter what I you know it doesn't matter what I have to say it doesn't matter what actually happened, it all comes down to what she decides to say happened or what she wants to have happened you know it's all what she says. Whatever I say in my defense means nothing because no one's going to believe me. And I just felt really scared because it, it's literally no one will believe me, so what am I supposed to do? Because you're totally powerless, and yet she is the person in total position of power. Yeah, and then um, <clears throat> also she's in power, but she doesn't even realize the magnitude of her actions. Like, She's in power, but she doesn't even know it. She doesn't know how much the how much damage she can cause, and that's why it's so dangerous. Because it's bad enough when they know how much power they have over you, but it's even worse when they don't. And I don't think she does know because that accusation is not something to be fucking taken lightly. But anyway, I was over at a friend's house for a party and. I went over there not expecting anything or any attention from any females because I'm not, you know, basically all the girls there were taken. They had someone that, you know, was, you know, their, their, their match, I guess you'd say. Well, I went there and I just went there to have fun or whatever. And anyway, at one point, this girl, okay... I'm gonna have to name these people so no one gets confused, but I'm not gonna give out their true name, their real names, just you know, for you know, privacy's sake. <clears throat> but there was there was me. There was a girl. We'll call her. Uh, we'll call her Becky, and we'll call the other one Christine. And um, there's a couple other people, but they're not as important to mention, and they'll come into play later, and I'll mention them when they actually show up. But anyway. The girl this, this situation happened with, uh, Christine, well, anyway, the the whole night, which she, as soon as she shows up at the party, she's already, you know, complaining because her boyfriend, who, uh, is, you know, whatever, she just got a relationship and she's already with another guy, and her boyfriend didn't feel like going to the party. So she's complaining about how she'd been ditched by him and, and saying how she hopes she doesn't do something stupid. And if she does, that it's his fault for ditching her. So already we're off to a bad start because she's already showing how promiscuous she is and showing, you know, how basically getting responsibility out of the way. You know, already she's off to... Well, if if anything happens, it's not my fault. Nah. So, Christine's already, you know, letting everyone know in the room that, you know, her boyfriend didn't live up to her expectations and that she might do something stupid. So then, as the night goes on and everyone gets to drinking or whatever and, you know, other things, but 
She plan her big plan was to to get drunk, to to forget about how bad you know being this was, and 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 that she hopes something bad happens. I don't know. I hope I don't do anything stupid. Well, anyway, as she's drunk and and as I I slowly get drunk, whatever. Um, but I I, I don't really particularly I don't hang around anyone in particular. I I kind of just float around and and we'll talk to uh, people and we'll move on. Uh, and. There was some, so I played some like uh, PS3 for a while or whatever, and anyway, at one point they they were like, well, let's listen to some music. So they put some music on, and this Christine girl was like, come, somebody come dance with me, man. She's like, you, and, and she was referring to me. And the disposable human dude, she's like, disposable human dude, come dance with me. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to dance. And she's like. Well, it's easy. The guy just stands here like this. And she, like, you know, a guy, she's, like, tells me to basically put one of my hands, like, up, like, slightly above my head, and the other one around my, like, chin or mouth level. And I'm supposed to just rock, like, side to side. And that's how, that's supposedly, that's all a guy has to do. And then she's like, now you just hold still. And the girl grinds on you like this. So she's, like, uh, first is, like, with her back to me and her arms up and she's like shaking her ass like on me not in front of me but on me up and down my leg or whatever and around my fucking junk and then after like you know 10 or 15 seconds she'd turn around and like then fucking like shaking her you know goddamn everything like literally on me like her vagina and everything in my face in my personal space and, like, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I was like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, woo, super cool. In the club. I was joking around. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, okay. And I grabbed her, like, by the sides of her arms, like, below her shoulders. And I was like, I pushed her out of the way. Like, I was laughing. I was like, okay, I'm done. This is, like, stupid. <clears throat> uh, and and she's like, oh, you're you're boring. She was, you know, joking around. Like, oh, come on. And I was like, no, nah, I, I don't really like dancing. I'm not really good at it. So, I go and go off and do whatever. But anyway, uh, the night goes on. And eventually, we get to the point where I'm, I'm sitting on the couch and I, there's some movie in. And uh, two guys, two of the, the guys that were there, uh, they had like laid down and were probably passed out. Uh, one of the people that had paired off uh, was my friend uh, Kevin and his girl, uh, <clears throat> his girl... Uh, what did I say her name was earlier? The B, I don't even remember. Becky? Yeah, Becky. So they're like laying there on the floor under a blanket. And they're not doing anything, they're just laying there, you know, cuddling or whatever, watching the fucking movie. And, um, uh, so, or no, that was actually afterwards, sorry. Um, before, this was like as things were settling down, but before they settled down, you know, uh, the lights were still on and the movie hadn't yet started, and I was sitting on the couch, and, um, uh, Freaking uh, Christine is sitting on the opposite end of the couch, and there's a space, a seat in between me and her. And the whole night, she's like flirting with me, but really flirting with everybody. But like, uh, obviously, since I, you know, I am me, so I only really notice that it's, you know, oh, a girl's flirting with me, really cool, blah blah. blah. And like, I find her attractive with her. Uh, I should have known better than to even like. For one, to think that she was attracted to me. But anyway, um, so the whole night, uh, I had misjudged. Uh, apparently this guy, Tyler or whatever, uh, she likes him or whatever. And Well, I thought she liked him, but apparently they were really good friends for a long time. Anyway, she, like, tells him to come lay with me on the couch. Or, nah, nah, nah. And he's like, he says some excuse, and he goes to the, to the next door because there's a party going on over there. So he goes over there. And as soon as he leaves, she's like, well, fine then. And just like, uh, I'll just lay with disposable human being. So I'm sitting on the couch and, uh, disposable human being, fuck. Uh, sitting on the couch and she lays her head on my lap and, like, proceeds to just sit there and the movie begins, blah, blah, blah. Well, I had, I had misjudged the situation as, once again, flirting. Like, why else would, why else would she do these things? Like, what, uh, I mean, what kind of, if you're just friends with someone, you don't just, you don't, for one thing, you don't grind on them. Two, 
you don't talk, uh, you don't lay your head in their lap and like lay all over them. So, I mean, I, I, I feel as if these were obviously, I mean, I interpret it as flirting and I would think that most people would. Would you say that that's pretty accurate? Like most friends don't do that? Yes, uh, I would say that uh, friends usually talk, friends usually... They may have some physical contact, like they may hug each other, or, you know... Usually they don't even really do a whole lot of that, but there are certain things you you do not do as friends, and generally hold hands is one of them, or flash body parts... Or you touch don't personal rub genitals on the exactly. other person. Exactly, totally. I mean, that is what people who are intimate partners in a relationship do. Yeah, and like, and then the whole laying, laying, not just like laying on my shoulder. That'd be bad enough, but laying her head in my lap or whatever. So that's flirting. Yeah. So um, as a movie player or whatever, uh, I you know I just assume she's watched the movie, so. Um, Anyway, I, I grabbed her ass or whatever, and that, you know, I guess that would be bad enough. But, uh, and this wasn't even over, maybe a period of 15 to 20 minutes that this whole thing happened, like, on the couch. But, like, I grabbed her ass, and that, I guess that would be bad enough, but it apparently gets worse because I put my hand in her pants and grabbed her ass, like, instead of just through the pants, I put her, my hand in the back of her pants and grabbed her ass. That's all I did. And uh, I didn't I didn't go anywhere near her, you know, vagina, which she profusely rubbed against me earlier the night. I knew better than to do that. But I figured it shouldn't be a very big deal if she's flirting with me. I'm grabbing her ass, and I'm even if I put my hand in her pants, I'm still just grabbing her ass. I'm not doing anything else. And you know, if she didn't like it, then she would say something. Well, you know, according to her, she was asleep, and that's the whole thing. Was that? When she woke up, my hands were in her pants. Well, my question to her would be, if if you woke up and this happened, why didn't you mention it to me and how uncomfortable it, it was? Why didn't you say something to me? Like, there were plenty of other people there. It's not like I was going to beat the shit out of her or something. And if she would have told me when she woke up that it was uncomfortable, I would have immediately profusely apologized multiple times because I would, you know, would not want to give the wrong idea. Like... I thought, you know, I thought you, I thought she was flirting with me, and apparently she wasn't. Well, um, before that even happened, like, basically, she was apparently asleep, which she wasn't, because as she was sleeping on my lap, and, uh, anyway, the door opens, and as soon as the door opens, and it's like, she sees who it is, from where she's laying, she can easily see the door, and as soon as it opens up to see who it is, she sees it's, uh, Tyler... She immediately sits up and goes, I guess I must have fallen asleep. And then immediately lays down with on him, uh, with him on a mattress on the floor. And gets her in a blanket with him. And uh, that's all there was that night, you know. A- according to her, later, she she uh, had woke up with my hands in her pants. But yet, w- what it was, she woke up as soon as the guy that she wanted to be with came back. You know, really what it was was she was sitting there. The guy came back. She got up to get with him. And she didn't mention anything to me that night at all. And <clears throat> after they laid down, I sat there for a little bit longer, just watched the movie, and I was like, I was, uh, it was kind of, it's not a very clean apartment, and I didn't really feel like I wanted to sleep, like, there at all. So I was like, well, I'll just walk home, and then I can, like, you know, I'll have something to eat, and I'll probably just go to bed in my comfy, normal bed that I'm used to sleeping in. So I went home, and that's all there was to it. I didn't hear anything about it until the next day, where uh, Becky was texting me. She's like, what happened between you and Christine last night? And I was like, what do you mean what happened? And I I come to find out that, um, like, she says everyone's mad at me. And I'm like, what is everyone mad at me for? And she says, for taking advantage of Christine while she was asleep. And I immediately immediately flipped the fuck out because that was literally that's the last thing I want to be thought of as is some creepy ass molester especially when I didn't even do anything like not only was she flirting with me the whole night but she literally as far as I knew she was awake and even if she wasn't why didn't she mention anything when she did wake up you know what it sounds like to me is that um 
she was doing some cover her ass kind of uh, uh, damage control because she was on the couch with you and then the other dude come in. Oh, I must have fell asleep. You know, like an excuse for being there with another guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, oh I fell asleep. You know, like basically, um, what is it? Uh, voiding uh, herself of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Is what it sounds like to me. It's like, like oh, oh I'm, I'm not. Know. I'm not intentionally doing this to me. To me. I must have fell asleep. Uh, you know, as, a, as an excuse for being on a couch with another guy. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. And like, this, it's a it's a way to dignify her situation. So it, it, and like I find out that they're using this, and I immediately am super mad, super mad, super scared, like just basically f completely flustered. And I'm like, "What are you fucking talking about?" And I I, I told my side of the story, like as as you know cordially as I could, but I was in a really you know I was I was pretty fucking pissed, but I was mainly scared because I know what this means. If she decides to make some huge fucking deal out of it, then, you know, God knows what could happen. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm sitting there in my bed, and I can't stop shaking. Like, this, obviously, this isn't the same night. This is the next night. Um, uh, I was getting ready to go to bed when I when she, uh, when she Becky texted me about it or whatever. And um, I'm sitting there, and I can't stop shaking. And, like, I'm just thinking about taking my rifle and just... Loading in one of those fucking Russian surplus rounds in there and thinking about what it would do to me if I did it, and that it would definitely, it would definitely, it would definitely kill me. Then that was what I was mainly worried worried about. I was like, well, this should get the job done in case I have to do it because I, I'm I'm so scared of being, you know, of something like this happening where where you know it she can say whatever she wants to and no one will believe me, and then. If I get sentenced, I, I have to serve uh, serve time in uh, a place where in which you know I shouldn't be for something that that I really didn't even do, and so I I got really fucking scared and like basically made a decision at that point like if 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 someone if she tries to do something in order and tries to ruin my life then I'm just going to kill myself. I'm not going to go through the corrupt system. You know, because it's totally going to be biased. It would totally be biased in her favor. And she would get to say whatever she wants to. And she would get whatever she needs from them. And then I would get fucked. Literally and, and um, literally and, uh, I can't even think right now. I'm so, like, but, you know what I mean. Literally and figuratively, I would get fucked. Because I would get put into a, uh, I would get put into jail or whatever. You know, this is all, like, conjecture. I don't know what would really happen, but basically it's whatever she wants to happen. If she makes a big deal out of it, I get labeled as, you know, a horrible person. I could, you know, I might be made to, like, I might just have to deal with people thinking I'm a, a creep my whole life or whatever, but I might get, you know, in trouble, legal trouble or whatever for, you know, oh, he's a molester. We can't have him out of the streets because it's whatever she says I am. And I don't want those, you know, I don't want that to happen, especially when it's something that I didn't even do, like, I didn't consciously do. It's not like I decided to be a major fucking creep. And I have many people who will attest to my character. I'm not the type of person that would do that. And weren't you drunk anyway, so you, t you weren't even totally aware of your actions? No, I was, I mean, to a certain extent, yeah, but I was aware enough that I knew, like, well, she's flirting with me, so mm -hmm. I should flirt with her back. Which is if I what maybe if I wasn't drunk, then I would have known better. And I'm not using that as an excuse, but she apparently was because she's like, I can't believe you. I thought I could trust you, not take advantage of you when I'm drunk. I'm like, I wasn't taking fucking advantage of you. You were flirting with me, which is provocation. Yeah, and she claims that you know I would not, I would never do something like that consciously. Oh, oh, but I then, got... but then she says that that's just her personality. So which is it? Exactly, and she's like, "Well, well I got a boyfriend. I wouldn't do something like that." Mur, mur. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like, oh yeah, because she literally got with the guy she's with now after, after cheating on her last boyfriend with that guy. So that just shows you right there how important relationships are to her. She'll cheat on the guy she's been with, and then get with a new guy. And that didn't even have anything to do with it. Because, like, 
as soon as she, the big deal she was making out of her boyfriend ditching her and the way she was flirting made it totally seem like, hey, somebody pay attention to me, which is what she really wanted was attention, but she didn't have to flirt because now it causes massive shitstorm. Now, I smoothed things out with her and I talked to her and I apologized profusely and I apologized more than, more than necessary and I didn't even, I didn't even bring into uh, account the things she had done because... I, I had to do damage control. I have to worry more about myself than my... At this point, I have to worry more about myself than what I'd actually like to say. Because I have to worry about my well-being and my safety and my continued existence. Because I don't want to be dead. Like, I don't want to fucking... I mean, I don't want to be dead over something this fucking petty. And I don't want to fucking, you know, serve jail time. And I won't. It's basically, I'm not going to go to jail for something I didn't do. I'd rather die. So... You know, and that that's part of the, the, the fear that, that men have for going to jail because it, if it was, you know, what it actually should be, you could go there and serve time for something that you did and you wouldn't be raped to fucking pieces and have the shit beat out of you and, you know, no one would care. And, and even if you go to jail for something that's not a horrible crime, it's just like, oh, you didn't pay your taxes, you're automatically, you're automatically dirt to everyone because, you know... It even like for instance, people that are falsely accused and they get in, they get put in, and then years later they find out, oh well, you didn't do it, and they're just supposed to be like, well, well, I only served twenty seven years out of life sentence, so I'm happy. Can you imagine what you would feel like if that happened? This sense of betrayal. Yeah, and then even if you are acquitted or whatever, society will still label you as like because they think well, it's that biased patriarchal society. Exactly. And see, this is like things run through my mind. It's like, what horrible thing will happen to me? And, and thinking like, you know, my, I, I, my, basically, I accepted that my life could be over. And that I would be the one that chose, I'd rather, you know, I would rather have choose the time and place than, you know, God knows what would happen or whatever. Anyway, it was a little, it was, it was obviously, I wasn't thinking very clearly at the time because really it's not a very big deal at all what happened. But I was so scared of what might happen. Because you know the consequences are typically, especially in sex related stuff, are, the consequences are typically related or, ty- okay, consequences in sexual matters are typically always reserved for the male gender. Yeah, and anyway, I, I've, I've, right now... Things the the storm has calmed, and supposedly this girl still wants to be friends with me. And I suggested I was like, no. If anything, I I don't mind. You know, whatever. I didn't say I didn't want to be friends, but what I did say was, I don't think I should be around for a while because I don't want to get my face beaten in by whoever. I don't need that. I don't need all this drama. And she's like, well, I wouldn't let that happen. And I really hope she's being honest. I really hope that she's not just you know. And she's like, but I do have to tell him. I was like, you can tell him whatever, because honestly, this guy's a lot older than me and her. So uh, I hope that he's smart enough to see the situation. Uh, now, when did this happen? Um, Saturday, wait, Friday, no, Friday night. It's, okay. But anyway. Um, so really, that was the 16th. I guess. Anyway. Uh, things are smoothed out now and I really hope that things go well for me and that I don't get accused of this because like now that this has happened it's given me even more ammunition for my guns like where it's like in, in a sense because now whenever someone asks me why I'm, I'm not around you know why don't you have rumor well this is why or you know why why are you so reserved around females it's like well I I, I know better than to think that you know I can just you know, show affection or whatever. So, I really hope that this doesn't fuck my shit up because I've learned this now even more so. I mean, I I literally don't want to be around anyone right now. And especially not anyone around my age. And I don't think I will for a long time because if this goes well and I don't end up fucked over or dead, you know, from my own hand or whatever, then... I literally, it's like, I told her, I assured her, it's like, oh, trust me, it'll never happen again. You have nothing to worry about. It'll never happen again. And see, she won't even understand what you're talking about because she will never have to go through this shit that she or anybody else puts you through. It's like, literally, I won't even, I wouldn't even shake her hand or give her a hug now. Fuck, I wouldn't even be caught in the same fucking room with her. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, she wants to be friends, it's like, 
you expect me to want to be friends with you now? After this? Like, no. I mean, and, and you know, no, it, I'm made out as a bad guy because of what I did. It's like, the only reason I took any action was because she had given me the thought that, you know, that I was supposed to. Like, oh, I'm going to flirt with this guy all night. But then when he makes a move on me, which isn't even a big fucking deal. Then I'll accuse him of a fucking sex crime. Yeah. And that's, that's like, some serious fucking shit. You don't go waving that shit around. And you know what? People would... You know, it's basically, it's like tumbling, tumbling down the rabbit hole to find out how fucking common this shit is. Yeah. And anyway, this is, like, my half of the, the video was basically saying that and, like, how fucking, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I, I already consider myself to be awake, but, like I said, this, this has woke me up even more, like, that, yes, it can happen to, to anyone, it can even happen to I mean, it, it happened to, to me, and before it happened to me, I thought, well, you know, it happens, but it hasn't happened to anyone I know, well, besides you, mm -hmm. but, like, you know, it can even happen to, to you, whether or not you believe it now, when you watch, you watch it, it's whoever watches this video may think that, oh, well, it hasn't happened to me. It can, it can easily happen to you, and if you let your guard down for even a split second for any reason, it could happen to you. And, <clears throat> you know what, um... He said this to your part of the video. Well, I'm just going to reintroduce myself to the audience. I am Manslave, and I have a story to tell also. And the disposable human doing just told his story of what happened to him. Um, and he knows some of my story because on a separate incident... Uh, at a different time, which was, you know, his, what happened to him um, that he just told you about happened less than a week ago. Uh, he said it was on November 16th, which was Friday of uh, 2012. So this is like, real quick, uh, this is reinforced, this is reinforced me literally now. I know, I know completely, with, without a doubt, no better than to, to mess around with women. Because... Part of the reason why I even, you know, thought that she, you know, like, even accepted the idea that someone could be flirting with me is because I was intoxicated. But now that this has happened, I don't think that, I mean, I was already almost at the point where I didn't even, like, feel, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to be with a woman right now anyway. But yeah, I still, you know, I still have desires or whatever. But... Like, now that this has happened, I literally just like, okay, it's it's safer to stay with, you know, how I'd been doing things before that night. Because I had never had this happen before, but the one time I try to, to, to you know, do my part or whatever, for, because she basically did half of it, I'm supposed to do the other half. You know, she started the flirting, I'm supposed to flirt back, so I did, and then I see the consequences, and now it's like, no, I'm done playing the game. It's over. You know, I, yeah. gave, I, I, even after all the shit that I've, I've, that's already happened before this, I, I let, you know, I gave this situation the benefit of the doubt, I gave her the benefit of the doubt, and she showed me that I can't trust anything, really. Because if this can happen so, this can happen over and that. They, and they throw out that sexual, uh, al allegation so fucking frivolously. Yeah. Well, like, the thing is, they just flaunt their fucking toxicity. And perhaps this reinforced your understanding of why MIGTO is very important to solving this problem. We need to show women that we will not fucking stand for this shit. And not even the fucking men's rights activists are going to be effective enough. Okay? And for sure the fucking feminists don't give a fucking shit what happens to men. As they've already fucking showed. Matter of fact, it was the fucking feminist, you know, 30, you know, 30 years ago, 35, 40 years ago, who fucking pushed for this shit. You know what I'm saying? 
all this goddamn fucking fear mongering make basically feminism is actually the most significant source of real misogyny that exists in this world because when they say that women are victims all the time of things they're actually saying that women are not able to cope with the with the world that they live in or that they're not able to handle it or that women are not able to accommodate and this is fucking feminism that that, that implies this shit with all their fucking claims well, it's hard being a woman. Why? And you hear feminists and all that say that. Why is it hard being a woman? Are women unable to deal with the world? I mean, you see these examples of where feminism is actually real misogyny. Anyway, um, you know, you talked about your story and all that, which had happened uh, less than a week ago. Now, you know about my story, uh, <clears throat> at least some of it, because... Last year, in 2011, which was a year of significant misandry mm. uh, with the uh, uh, Catherine Q. Becker and then the Thomas James Ball and then many other, and then the woman who poisoned her, her husband to death or boyfriend to death because you know with Visine eye drops because she wanted to get his attention and all this other stuff. There was like at least two or three guys that got their penises cut off that year and one of them died uh, from uh, blood loss but anyway <clears throat> okay now in my situation back in 2011 the summer of 2011 you know a little bit something about that because some of the same people who fucked my life up also tried to come after you and fuck your life up but they were not quite as successful because in the situation you didn't have as much to lose as I did um, and we're going to get into that briefly. Um, and my situation was, as it's been for, for, for years, where I'm fed up with, with women or, you know, females. I'm, I'm so fed up with them flirting with me until the point which I become interested in them. And this happens to a lot of guys. But then, <clears throat> whenever I do finally become interested in the girl, just because of her sheer persistence of flirting, then all of a sudden, when I become interested in her, oh, it's a big fucking problem. You know, and we'll have to get into this. We'll have to save it for another video. Anyway, uh, what had happened to me is uh, this girl I worked with, um, she acted differently than, than other uh, people that I had worked around. She was she was always really nice to me and of all the of all the coworkers I had who would do stuff that would piss me off or they would gripe at me or complain or or they would just not do their job right and I'd have to get on to them or whatever circumstance. You know, people have quarrels with their coworkers and all this. Well, me and this girl, we always got along. I mean, and like, she got along with me more than anybody else did. And I had this problem to where I confused kindness, where I confused politeness with interest. Where if a girl's all extra nice to me, you know, I mistakenly believe that she's interested in me let because. Me, let me interject real quick. And I suffered from a similar problem, but the situation that happened with me was obviously, and I even have two other people that will attest to it, that it was obviously flirting. Oh, and even, yeah, and even yeah. the girl herself admits it. Where's my personality? So it's like, I know what he's saying because I, I do I do the same thing. If someone expressed interest in me more than they usually would, I I interpret that as interest because you know most people. But if don't. they give you more attention, yeah, than then they normally more would. more than is necessary. Like, why would they do that? Exactly, because what they do is they treat you the same way you would treat them if you were interested in them, and then that's why we interpret what they're doing as interest. Like, for example, if we like a girl, we'll try to socialize with her, you know, and we'll try to get to know her. 
um, or will be, you know, really extra helpful, or basically... So and, sacrificing. Yes, but... Probably would have been... <clears throat> What we what we typically do is, if we're interested in a girl, we will basically um, be very very positive toward her. Um, you know, try to be around her, socialize, all this other stuff, um, and maybe just you know engage in a lot of conversation. Or there there's there are ways, okay, in expressing interest, okay that do not necessitate physical contact or whatever, okay? I remember, you know, I always thought a girl wanted to date me if she asked me if I had a girlfriend, because isn't that what you would yeah, ask like, a girl? Yeah, why would you ask that if you're not... If you're not interested. Yeah. I mean, it literally... And, it, and even if you are, like, what 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 business is it of yours? Exactly. Why why do these women need to know if I have a girlfriend or not? You know, if if all they want to do is just be friends or just casual yeah, acquaintances. Why does it matter? Why does if it they matter? They just want to be friends. They'll find out eventually. If you exactly. Know or not. I mean, if if they're not interested in dating me, then why are they asking me these personal questions like that? You know. And also another thing, why do they bitch about their boyfriend? I, I, this is, this is a, just like a low level question, but why do they bitch about their boyfriends in front of you? And you know, when they, if they're not interested in you, the answer to that is you know, they they want they want they want to tell you these things because they know they it's like a animal instinct. They know by the way from like pretty much the moment of meeting you, the way you react to, to meeting them. They know what type of guy you are. Either you're the type that they'll date or you're not. And if you're the type that they won't date, it's usually you're not, you know, your specific type of person. That you might be, like, like we are. You may be more of a beta, which I, I don't like. I don't like classifying people as alphas and betas. But a beta, you know, someone who's uh, not, not like, uh, I don't know, not domineering, uh, not arrogant or loud or anything like that. Just kinda, not assertive, and and not they are very passive, passive and submissive. And, uh, very uh, submissive, submissive, and then I'm thinking of the word for um, I forget, but uh, introverted. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and, introvert. And they can uh, they can read this, so they know if you're acting that way. They know if they talk, you know, they talk bad at their boyfriend. They know that you might be foolish enough to try and do all these things to her to show her that you're viable as an option. And, and to show that you care and to show compassion and, and all that. Hoping in that which she thrives on. Yeah, and that's what she wants is another slave. Like, oh, this guy, you know. It, because her feelings are ultimately the most important thing to her. And this gets into what my, and this is very revealing because my former girlfriend, um, you know, the way she talked about her feelings like, for example, when we were talking about how we're going to raise the kid and all that, and she said that, you know, my former girlfriend told me not to basically warp my kid's um, head, making him think that he has to work all the time. Well, uh... And she wanted him, She and she always trumped up and exaggerated her contributions, which she and, and she she basically basically anything you have to say is pointless and stupid. But whatever she has to say is like God. Well, what she was trying to do is market her her ability to contribute to the child's development, which was providing emotions. Mm -hmm. And well, you gotta understand, my former girlfriend, she was what the, what they call emo, and I know what you know what emo means. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, and to where they are excessively emotional, uh, probably even bipolar, uh, which a lot of women are. Uh, Gunsley is bipolar. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, a lot of women are these days. I mean, it's astounding. It's like a fucking plague. Um, so anyway, um, so anyway, okay, that gets into that. Um, but yeah, the whole, I mean... If if you are not interested or attracted to or trying to pursue somebody, 
there are certain things that you do not do. It's like it's a fucking etiquette or code of conduct. Mm -hmm. Okay, you do not ask somebody if they're married or in a relationship or anything personal like that. And sometimes you don't even ask them their age. And um, you don't ask them if they live alone. Uh, you don't express affection. You do not make physical contact. We know these things. We were brought up, you know, being educated that you, you know, you do not initiate physical contact with people unless they tell you that you're okay with it and all this other stuff. And we, we were raised on uh, various, you know, a, a very a very rigid code of conduct of what's acceptable and we see that women break that all the time I mean like and every time a girl asks me if I had a girlfriend I immediately um, took interest in her because I I was naive and I believed that she was interested in me because why would she be yeah, asking why would you me? Ask that question? Because I was expecting these girls to obey the rules, the code of conduct that if you're interested in somebody, then you ask them if they are uh, in a relationship or taken or whatever. Well, well, women they just they they got this uh, they got this curiosity, and yes, part of it is that they want to find out who they can control or who is who's out there in the playing field or whatever fucking bullshit they do. So anyway, dude. So back to this girl I worked with. Okay. She was always nice to me and all that. And I misinterpreted and I misinterpreted to, I, I thought that she was interested in me. And, um, I never heard her talk about a boyfriend or anything like that. And hopefully this, you know, this story doesn't get too long. I'm going to try to really condense it. Um, well, anyway, <clears throat> luckily the disposable human doing is here because he knows quite a bit of this backstory also, mm -hmm. well, because he was actually involved in this whole scenario. Anything that you miss is significant, I'll definitely mention. All right. Um, now, um. Well, one thing you need to, like, give this person a name because it's going to get pretty hectic. What I mean, you, I'm sure you can't. I mean, you did come up with a bunch of nicknames. Well, we don't even have to make. I mean, like we don't even have to designate a name for right now. Well, all we gotta do is pick to de to designate a name for. Her, all we gotta do is pick one of the many nicknames you gave her. So pick one. How about Bell Bottom? Okay, and this also now the nickname Bell Bottom is a nickname that even my former girlfriend. Had given to this particular girl that I'm talking about. No, don't, you don't really even have to go into why. It just it doesn't matter. Like we we both know why. Okay, yeah, but we know. it's okay. not important. Okay, just basically to designate a name for her. Uh, this she, girl she'll here to here to for be known as Bell Bottom. Bell Bottom. Okay. And um, that was the girl who you know got along with me really good. Uh, in the workplace, even when other people didn't. And she was always nice to me and all that. And another thing is, she seemed like a really good worker, and that impressed me. Um, because I was brought up, raised by my family, to understand work uh, as something that's very important. So anyway, th this girl, you know, was in the, in the workplace and all that, and she seemed to always do her job pretty good. And didn't really complain about anything. And really just seemed like the embodiment of... I'm just saying, this is from interpretation. I interpreted her as like the embodiment of like somebody that had good ethic. And that's what made me start to take interest in her. I mean, like, regardless of what she looked like... Because me and the disposable human doing were both actually attracted to her... Um, at the same time, and yeah, and the ironic thing is, we didn't fight over. Her. I mean, we didn't even feel like that was necessary. I mean, the 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 attitude that both me and the disposable human doing had toward each other regarding this girl is like, hey, dude, you can have her if you want. 
And then, you know, on the other, you know, like, I, I, I would tell the disposable human doing, I'd say, dude, if, if you want bell bottom, you can have her, dude. I mean, it's cool. I mean, don't bother me. And then, bell, and then, and then the disposable human doing, I mean, what did you say? What was your response to that? Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I mean, he just pretty much like, oh, dude, if you want her, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can have her if you want her. We didn't care which one of us got with her, even though we were both attracted to her, you know? And, you know, this is totally contrary to the fucking, fucking mythology that, that women will put out there. Well, men just want to fight, man. Some of them do. Yes, we're not going to dispute that. I mean, we've seen it. However, not all men are like that. <clears throat> and whenever you try to say that... Name off. Well, well, yeah, they are, and you just don't understand. Man, man. And we're just supposed to fucking shut up and deal with it. You know? Well, no, it doesn't fucking work that way. So anyway, I'm, t I'm fucking tired of two goddamn fucking decades. 20 years of my life. That's two-thirds of my life telling women that not all men are fucking assholes, okay? And, and it fell on fucking deaf ears. And, and they're like, and the typical response is, well, you just don't understand. You know yeah. what? That's or even worse, it's like, well, except you. Oh, is that I've what they that told you? I've fucking used on me before. Well, men are assholes. I'm like, what the fuck? What about me? You know, like, literally saying this while I'm in the room, like, in the conversation at the same table as the person sitting. Like, well, you know, not you, though, except you. I was like, oh, okay, but I'm not good enough. Okay. See, that's a thing. I mean, that's, that's what this is another thing that tumbled us, that tumbled me and the disposable human doing down the rabbit hole, is why women say they want a nice guy, but they actually don't. And, and then they go for a guy who they'll label later as a jerk. Yeah, and that's the key word there is they later uh, label later. They they later label him as a jerk. Yeah, because he's not one until afterward. Exactly. Well, he well he showed who he really was. Yeah, man, and then they give us a new guy, and he's a nice guy until later. Then he's a jerk because according to them, these guys are what they want, and he's only a jerk after the fact. So they always are with a nice guy until they decide that you know they're not getting what they want. Then he's suddenly a jerk. Exactly. And I'd say that most assholes were not born that way; they were actually made. <clears throat> And I, I know because I actually take nice guy as an insult now. Yeah. I mean, I actually rather be called an asshole because, after all, aren't assholes rewarded in our society? And ironically, the girl that, uh, you know, uh, Christine or whatever, before the situation happened the other day, she labeled me as the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And if she had thought of me as that and thought that my character, you know, that I was a nice guy, why the fuck? Would she actually be, like, at, wouldn't she have some, wouldn't she meet up with some, like, conflict at some point in her own logic where she'd be like, well, wait a minute, he wouldn't do something like that unless he was, you know, unless he thought it was right. Like, it's such a fucking, I mean, she should know better, and I'm glad that other people have, like, understand, because I know... There are people there that have my back and and you know know my character and know that I wouldn't I'm not the type of person to do something like that. There would literally be no point. Why would I take advantage of a girl? Like, basically, the way I look at it is, I wouldn't want to do something to somebody that isn't reciprocated to me. Like, I I don't want to, like, take advantage of someone that isn't interested in me like there would be no point in it's like a one way street like why would I do it why would I like it's like it's like you know apparently all men are rapists but I mean they're obviously not and it's like w me personally like why would I ever want to rape someone because it's literally like Wow, I mean, and it's like a death sentence. It is, but that's happens. not even that. It's not even like it's not like oh, I won't rape people because I'm scared of the consequences. It's like I'm not gonna rape someone because not only is it like not something <clears throat> I'm interested in, because why would I want to rape? So why would I rape a woman that like it's it's rape it is it implies you know that it's not mutual. And I don't want to be with someone sexually that that doesn't want to be with me. 
And last time that I that that happened when I was with a girl and we tried to have sex, but she didn't really like it was basically one way. Like I was attracted to her, and she like I guess was gonna let me do it, but wasn't really into it, and it totally killed it. Like I couldn't even do it. And you know another thing I want to bring up is rape is very unthinkable. Yeah, and I mean no one sits there and thinks about man. Hmm. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to go rape somebody today. Nobody thinks that. I mean, I guess, uh, obviously, rape happens. I'm not saying it doesn't. But no one, I, I highly doubt that someone just sits there and decides to plan out their day with rape in it at some point. I mean, well, there actually, at least the talk of rape, yeah, that does happen a lot. And that's fucking women. They're yeah. the ones who talk about rape more than anything, it seems like. I mean... It's just like that episode of Dexter. What, what's with all this fucking rape shit, you know? <laughs> no one's raping anybody. <clears throat> exactly. And so anyway, back to um, our, our story um, with, uh, with uh, Bellbottom. So anyway, time went on and it just really, like, the way this girl treated me and all that, she's just really nice and just... I started to take interest in her. And then and then this this is where you'll have to actually help explain some of the stuff because I, you know the, the burden of just telling the story, you know, there's a lot of information mm -hmm. and you'll have to back me up on some of this kind of stuff because you were I mean there are situations where you were there and I wasn't um and we'll get into that and then there were situations where I was there and then you weren't um, but we do overlap quite a bit. <clears throat> anyway, so, and I, I was interested and attracted to this girl, but I really, as usual, try to keep it a secret. And there's reasons why I've had this phobia, god damn, since like, at least since the mid-1990s when I was a teenager. And especially in my late teens where I'm very, like... Like, like, basically, approval from a woman is so important to me. Or at least it was. Now it's not anymore. <laughs> See, I'm glad. Uh, but, I mean, you understand, right? I mean, because you had the same problem. And a lot of guys do. And, um, so anyway, and, uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to serve women for so long and be appreciated and admired by them. Because for so long in my life, I, I believed that women were superior. And th th there's reasons why I put them up on a pedestal for, god damn, like, like how many decades of my life? <clears throat> so anyway, um, so this girl, I mean, I had feelings for her. And I was really, really trying to keep it a secret and all that. Well, eventually she found out, um, and I don't know exactly how she felt about it. Ah, uh, now this is where you need to help out with this. Th there is, basically, I, where I went wrong is I got involved in, and I'm going to describe it this way, I got involved in a invisible love triangle. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And because I didn't know it existed. It's basically, <clears throat> Bell Bottom had a <coughs> really good friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't even know how to, okay, I don't even know how to say, I, I guess you can say it like that, but she basically, to everyone in, everyone around her, except... Okay, wait a minute. Bellbottom had a friend. We'll start there. Bellbottom had a friend. Her name was, um, fuck. Clan Master? I was going to say that, but yeah. <laughs> we'll just say, Bellbottom had a friend named Clan Master. Well, <laughs> they were actually not just friends. <laughs> they were more than friends. Well, that's what I'm going to get to, though. Like, they were, they were more than friends to everyone except Clan Master's mother. Clay Master's mother is a very religious woman, and she's what? Is she a Mormon? No, no, no. She's Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness. So she's all, you know, worried about uh, how her her 
friends at church are gonna totally not you know not like her or her daughter because her daughter is totally basically clan master and bell bottom <laughs> are lesbian but they won't even admit it like they totally are i mean they're totally in the closet they they are but they're not like they're not afraid to show everyone that they are but they all they don't even they don't even realize that they are i mean they walk around in public <clears throat> You know, holding hands and doing all this stuff and like all this PDA, very PDA type of things, and you know, Clay Master would come to uh, Bell Bottom, like would come to her work during lunch and would totally act like she would act like a fucking college guy that would be dating a high school girl. He totally like all defensive and like I brought you lunch, babe, or whatever. And giving and a whole lot of attention. A whole lot of attention, and would like, oh, God, I can't pick you up, get you right home. And it's totally a, a lesbian relationship between these two, and they won't even admit it. And I think what it is was Bell Bottom is probably bi because Bell Bottom uh, apparently had been with dudes before, and she tried to, well, like, we, me and her messed around at one point. We'll get to that later. Hmm. But. I think Clan Master is totally straight, like straight, straight lesbian, and I think Bell Bottom was bi. But anyway, these two had a thing, and you didn't know at that time, did you? you didn't no, know, I didn't. Like, no, I didn't you know. Guessed or anything, like really? Matter of fact, it was a complete surprise. And th- this is this is where what the whole was was someone else had mentioned that to you, and when they told you, you didn't even believe it. Yeah, and then when you told me, I didn't even believe it. And like. uh I don't know. What, what, and I didn't believe it until I, in late August when I saw it from in late August of 2011 when I saw it for myself. Yeah. And and I was shocked. I mean, I was I, mean, I was fucking devastated because um because somebody had told me about this and then I didn't believe it. I just dismissed it as like no, no, it's not true. And then you told me that you saw basically the same thing but at a different time period at a different place happening. You know, that these two girls are holding hands and displaying affection. And I still didn't even believe it. And then when I fucking saw it for myself in a public place with my own eyes, I I, I mean, I just physically felt shocked and devastated. And I, I, I just, it's like, oh my God. I never even would have thought. Yeah. And, you know, and see, the thing is, um, like, Bell Bottom obviously was, was, was a very, you know, a very submissive person and all that, but, yeah, um, the whole dynamic between those two. And, yeah, and you should have seen fucking Clan Master. I mean, god damn. I mean, she made it so fucking obvious. I mean, god fucking damn. No, I, I she acted just, just like a fucking dude. Who's got to be all fucking I've basically seen, displaying ownership of, of of his girl? I've seen how Claire Max acts. I've seen how she how she you know acts around her, and like the thing was, I don't remember if this was after or whatever, um, but um, the Clint or not Clint, uh, Bell Bottom <clears throat> at one point was like, because Bell Bottom and and. Uh, Man slave worked at the same place, and my mom works at the same place, and uh, so Bell Bottom started coming over to our house uh, sometimes after work to to visit my mom because they were co-workers. But she'd always come into my room and like lay on my bed, uh, not lay on my bed, but she'd sit on my because I don't have a couch in my room; it's a very small room, so my bed serves as a couch basically, um, and it, it's a bed and a couch basically. So people sit on it whenever they're, you know, visiting. Um, she like sit on my couch and like cuddle or whatever and like just get all physical and like so that's she's like just come up behind me and poke me or whatever because she doesn't know how to express her interest or whatever very well. She's essentially kind of like us in that sense, like except we wouldn't do that. It's socially awkward. Yeah, but she doesn't know how to express her, you know, feelings. But um, anyway. Uh, she like I mean I ended up making out with her once, but that was all that really happened. And part of the reason why I, I didn't take it any further because she didn't seem like a bad person, other than her like 
She seems to have anger problems, but I think it's just a front because I've been around her whenever she wasn't showing off, and she didn't seem like that at all. But she didn't seem like a bad person, and the only reason I didn't pursue it uh, was because I don't want to be with someone who can't even be honest with themselves and is, like, basically in a relationship with someone else but apparently doesn't think of it as one. Because it was a relationship. Whether or not she believes it was, that's what it was. And I didn't want to get in on the middle of that, so I don't know. But that comes into play later because I made out with her once. Uh, that comes into play later. But uh, anyway, continue from where you found out that they were, you know, uh, in a lesbian relationship. Yeah, and see, the thing is, uh, the reason why... Um, uh, Clan Master's mom. Um, see, the thing is, she she's very involved with the Jehovah's Witness Church, and <clears throat> and Clan Master's mom very much needs you know peer approval and yeah. that sort of thing because she don't want to go to hell for having a lesbian daughter because she don't want to burn in hell forever because her daughter's a lesbian. Man. Yep. Well, honestly. If the girl's a lesbian, I mean, we're all fine with that. I mean, it, it's just that's the way things are. But where we have a problem with Clan Master is in what she does and how she affects people because <clears throat> she would complete. Okay, here's the thing Clan Master and Bellbottom were basically lovers, but they both lived in the same house. Slept in the same bed. Slept in the same bed, you know, um, because of the living circumstances of living in Clan Master's mom's house, okay? So, um, Clan Master was lucky enough for her girlfriend, basically, to live with her and sleep in the same bed and all that. And, 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 <clears throat> and, uh, so, uh, anyway, they have feelings for each other. But Clan Master can't openly express that in the house because she's afraid that her mom will get all fucking pissed off and all that shit because her mom's a fucking wacko religious person that's like so fucking imposing. And that's why nobody likes her. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so in order to have affection going on with Bell Bottom. Uh, those two, you know, yeah, it's they'd have to do it in public when, whenever Clan Master's mom wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? So the only place where they can do it that Clan Master's mom was not around ha basically happened to be public places. Well, that came at a consequence because out in public, everybody's watching, and this is regarded as kind of a small town anyway. So everybody talks to each other, yeah, and communicates. Well, word got around, um, you know, word got around to me. I didn't even believe it both times that I heard it from different sources uh, uh, until I saw it myself, and then okay. that's when I finally believed it. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that you heard this from someone else. Yes. And it was not you who created this rumor, but that's what comes into play later, is that supposedly you're the one that made it up, even though you're the one that fucking heard it from someone else. Yep. And, um, but, oh gosh, do I got it on a flash drive? Um, but while we're on this topic, oh my fucking God, I, um, I got to, um, keep on talking and explain this. I'm going to hook up a hard drive. What am I supposed to explain? Uh, you just explain more of the situation. Well, I don't, I don't even know where to go from here because I don't remember. Did well, because we're talking you, about. Well, I know what you're talking about, but did you ask her out after no. this or when? No, I, I never asked this girl out, ever. Well, at what point. Uh, no, then, I'm trying to remember the. Uh, I thought you said you asked her out twice, but she never answered. No, that was somebody else. Okay, who's that? Code name. Um, uh, Oh well, anyway. So, 
the the idea was basically everybody knew that uh, that uh, Manslave had interest in in uh, bell bottom. This is before he knew about the lesbian thing, um, and so uh, Gunsley was like you know getting in uh, some you know trying to she told she told bell bottom that Manslave uh, or whoever. Uh, Told Bellbottom that uh, Manslave liked her, I guess, and, and said it twice, whatever. But there was no definite answer given, even though all it would have taken was a no, or no, you know, I'm not interested or whatever. But there was never any, any, you know, the first time there was no answer, and then the second time, I guess there was also no answer. And it would have probably just stayed at that, but. Uh, Clan Master's mom comes into play and like Jackson. Oh, I remember. I, and and I'll, I'll explain what happened. Um, what was going on is um, what what was going on is that um, you know, Bell Bottom found out that I was interested in her, and it didn't seem like all that big of a deal when Bell Bottom found out that I was interested in 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 her. You know, meaning Bell Bottom. Mm -hmm. However. And I'm going to get into, oh, where is this stuff? Go to the arc. Mm. Where do we go? Oh, let's see. All right. All right. Um, now on this um, on this rumor thing, the lesbian rumor. I'm going to show something, a Facebook post, because this gets into what goes on later. Yeah, you're going to have to edit this. Oh, crap. Oh, anyway, they, they didn't see that. They um, totally did. Well, pff, it don't matter. It's inconsequential. Um, our audience don't know these people. And if you saw any names, please do not make any contact with these people, please, because... We do not need for this fucking fire to be fucking rekindled. No, seriously, you're going to have to edit it now because anyone that wants to detract us can easily go do this and call the Master Shitstorm. Now that you mention it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so anyway, I'm going to have to try to edit it and whatever. Yeah, okay, because yeah. also... Okay, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, anyway, the point is, is it functions as proof because I was accused... It, basically, what, I, what you had just saw was my proof that I did not start a rumor because I was literally like one of the last people to find out about this thing. And, uh, but I became the fall guy uh, for this whole fucking fiasco. <clears throat> and this gets into the danger of what women do. Now, okay, so anyway... Okay, when Bell Bottom found out that I was interested in her, it didn't seem to be all that much of a problem. Okay, now when fucking Clan Master found out that I was interested in Bell Bottom, that's when it fucking blew up. Because mm, Clan Master called her mother. And see, that's where we stumbled upon a invisible love triangle. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, if I would have knew. That that Bell Bottom was like in a relationship with Clan Master, I would have just fucking left it alone, you know. <clears throat> but the thing is, Bell Bottom was hiding that relationship with Clan Master, um, so that Clan Master wouldn't get in a whole bunch of trouble, and so Clan Master's mom wouldn't have to go to hell and be and and be condemned by the church and all this other shit. So anyway, <clears throat> um. Okay, now this whole rumor, would you say that it formed a convenient um, method of dealing with me? Or, yeah, or, definitely. Okay, of disposing of me, right? Mm hmm Or making me the fall guy. Okay, it, <clears throat> like a pretext. Okay, because, um, uh, okay, um, so... Clan Master was worried that I guess that possibly Bell Bottom might take interest in me. You know the whole jealousy in a relationship kind of shit. Uh, Bell, I so mean, so she nipped it in the bud. Pretty much, she fucking made her move to fucking like quell any type of 
So Clam Master told her mom, and her mom made a huge fucking deal at, at uh, the main slave's place of employment. And this basically led to, you know, was it, I don't even remember the, you ought have to do this because I don't know the chronology All right, of what okay. happened, but obviously they called you in an office at some point. Oh yeah, okay, here's what we're going to get into, because, uh, um, Clan bot, or I mean, clan master knew that, like, I guess that people were catching on. Uh, and, and, and Bellbottom, you know, became aware of this too that people were catching on. It was becoming out in the open that there was a relationship between clan master and Bellbottom and all that. And of course, Bellbottom didn't want anybody to know, but then clan master especially didn't want anybody to know. Uh, <clears throat> because she didn't want to have to face her mom. So what had happened is that um, Clan Master basically went to her mom and made up all this shit and fucking started a shit storm and turned me into a fall guy for a rumor at the same time. <clears throat> and we found this out afterward because, I mean, all this shit was going on and just hit me by total surprise back in the summer of 2011. <clears throat> and uh, and here's how much of a surprise it was. At, I don't know, 7.30 or 8 o'clock, I was at my sister's house, and my mom was over there. We were just visiting my sister and all that. And then my mom gets a call on the cell phone, and then my mom gives a cell phone to me while I'm playing on the computer and all that at my sister's house. And it's Clam Master's mom on the phone wanting to talk to me. Okay, and she says, oh, Man, slave, you need to leave Bell Bottom alone. Uh, she, she's not interested in you. She's got anger problems. Mar, 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 and, and she's just 19 years old. And, and, mar, 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 and, and well, well, you'll find somebody. And, well, and, and mar, 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 but, but you need to leave her alone. And, mar, 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 and all this fucking shit. And, and basically made me out to be some kind of fucking predator. And I, I immediately started to get depressed. And I, I was on the verge of crying right there. And, like, because all I thought was that I was just attracted and interested in this girl and that I thought that she was right for me and all that. And, and I was really trying to keep it quiet. And, <clears throat> and, um... And, and just basically hide it and whatever. And, and I, I never touched her. I never flirted with her or anything like that. But, but Clan Master's mom said, Now you, do, you need to stop pursuing Bell Bottom, okay? She's, she don't need a boyfriend right now. And all this other shit. And, you know, being all direct and obvious about this. And... I mean, it just fucking hit me like, like a hundred tons of concrete, you know, just hitting me like a hundred ton weight of a solid concrete wall just hitting me. But then I found out leading up to this shit that, you know, th that people were finding out that, that, you know, clan master was lesbian and all that and basically to do damage control and and to protect clan master from getting in a bunch of trouble from her mom she just made up all this shit about how you know uh about how um like basically some kind of person who's like what like how would you describe it like what well, well, he, he shouldn't be pursuing bell bottom and basically play his whole victim shit or whatever and <clears throat> and basically clan master used her mom um as basically a weapon against me mm -hmm. and so anyway um after i got this phone call i was fucking devastated and depressed and I went home, <clears throat> I cried for hours. 
I sat here in this very chair that I'm sitting in right now and actually that you're sitting in because uh, I didn't have this chair yet but I thought I was sitting in that chair anyway I was sitting right here in this spot in the living room and I was so fucking depressed I was crying so hard so much and <clears throat> I um, actually got out my pistol um, Springfield Armory service model 4 inch it was okay that, that's okay the, the model number of it it's a Springfield it's made by Springfield Armory it's a XD 45 it's a uh, you know service model 4 inch barrel 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol holds 13 shots in the magazine one shot in the uh, in the chamber I had it fully loaded took all safeties off pointed the pistol basically at my face like kind of right between my eyes and all that and looked down the barrel and was gently squeezing on the trigger looking down into that barrel wondering if that if that's my destiny in there and I just felt so fucking worthless I felt like I was a detriment to society and I felt like I should basically kill myself so that I won't exist anymore for the purpose of alleviating women from ever feeling bothered mm -hmm. or whatever and so that they'll never have to feel bothered or anything like that so they'll never have to worry about me making them feel uncomfortable you know for if I might like some girl and she found out and so she'll never have to feel like I'm a threat or, or anything and I sat there for I forget how many minutes with that pistol fully loaded and pointed at my face and all safeties were off and I had my finger on the trigger I actually pressed hard enough on it to where I could start to feel the detail and, yeah, and all that and all, hard yeah, that disengage it. oh yeah it, it was definitely disengaged and I was actually gently squeezing on the trigger because, you know, you have to pull it a yeah. certain distance. Yeah. And I was actually squeezing on that trigger. And if I would just squeeze it a little bit more, it would have fired and killed me. Uh, these are forty five caliber. It was Hornady brand. It was their critical defense, 185 grain yeah. um, hollow point. Yeah, at less than a foot away. And <clears throat> I sit there fucking crying. And you... And, 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 and and I was, Due to their choices, you had to sit there and decide whether or not your life was worth someone else's discomfort. Yeah, whether yeah, exactly. What you know, just because it's weighing fucking, my life in a in a balance, weighing, trying to determine the weight of my life. Something no means. one should ever have to do. Pretty much, and I was sit there, and I, I thought, if I kill myself, then no woman will ever have to feel uncomfortable ever again. And I felt like I was a burden to society. And then I got to thinking, and you know what actually stopped me from pulling the trigger? Mm. It was that I didn't want to start a shitstorm because my family and some other people would understand the context in which that happened. Uh, receiving a phone call on the, the evening of August 31st, 2011. And especially my mom knew how, I mean, it just, how it affected me. And she thought it was a really unfair situation. And she honestly really doesn't know a whole lot about this. And she doesn't need to know. Nobody really needs to know. The only reason why I'm telling this is because the, the, women these days will fuck over a man so fucking bad. And it destroys lives. All this fucking girl power comes at a fucking cost. I mean, somebody has to pay the fucking price for his shit. I mean, and I mean, it, it's 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 bullying because it is. That's what I wanted to get into with this. It is bullying. It's bullying because when when the, the laws are so biased in their favor that they can literally just throw around these accusations like they're fucking goddamn gumdrops, and they can just throw these around and and not have to worry about you know don't even care about who it hurts. When they're allowed to do that, 
And they do it with a reckless abandon and do not and, care. And do it with impunity. And they, they like, threaten you with it before they even do it, you know, like... Or what, I mean, it's it's a threat, and it's always that's always the threat. You know, you have to worry. What if she decides to do this? And it's like one of the, I mean, one of the shittiest things that you could, that that a woman could possibly do. And they they're all willing to do it as long as the, you know it serves them their purpose. Because the reason why Clam by, uh, or Clam Master and Bellbottom did it was because they were saving their own hides. Which honestly, which who would have really gotten, or who who would have had uh, more of a, a detriment to them? Uh, you who would be dead, or them who would have to admit to their mom that they were fucking lesbians? Exactly, and I want to get into the aftermath of what this happened, and so um, what happened, and I decided that you know that. I don't want to start a fucking war between a couple families and all that. So I, I, I finally set the gun down. I was still crying quite a bit. I, I disarmed the gun, put it away, uh, went to the liquor store. Um, this is around midnight uh, going into September 1st, 2011. I went to the liquor store and decided to drink to calm myself down. Um, and then I bought a bottle of Smirnoff blueberry flavored vodka. And I was talking to the store clerks, and it, it was really eerie as I was talking to them uh, about this because I, I felt so much like worthlessness and like I should, like, like why do I even continue to walk this earth? Mm -hmm. Kind of a feeling. And it won't be too much longer than I'll end this video. <clears throat> Anyway, um, so um, I, um, and, and then there was basically a girl in the liquor store who was advising me on what flavor of liquor to get, or liqueur, or whatever, alcoholic beverage, and she looked like totally attractive to like what, I, what my preferences are. I just looked at her as like, as if she was just like, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, she was attractive, but it's like, I just felt so fucking distant from her, and like, like I was so distracted by, you know, shame and all that, and then I just, my action, I was just so slow in how I was just, because I was thinking a whole bunch, and so my reactions are so slow. I drove back home, took a couple sips out of it, got a headache, cried myself to sleep, and basically a part of me died that night. Um, because the next day at work, I started ignoring Bell Bottom immediately, uh, and I ignored her for days. Uh, kept kept a distance, like I wouldn't even like allow myself to be even like physically in the same area. So this went on for days, and well, guess what? Oh gosh! Um, oh, was it the sixth? Or even, whatever? They couldn't even leave it there. Exactly, and this is where it gets into fucking bullying because here it is. I decide it's like I made a mistake. I need to not do that mistake anymore. I need to undo all that and then not cause any more problems. So I began avoiding this girl and not interacting with her and just you know live and let live kind of shit. Well, what happened was. Um, apparently, uh, Clam Master and her mom had a vendetta against me or something, because, um... It was just, it's all a game to them, and you hadn't suffered enough for them to yeah, be... That's know. basically right, because keep in mind, at this time, Clam Master, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Clam Master's mom didn't have a, did not have a job, and I found out afterwards she didn't feel like it was fair for me to keep my job after all this ordeal just because I was fucking like attracted to a girl that lived in her house and all that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they found out that I was attracted. Oh, like it's a big fucking crime, you know? And this is why I keep so fucking secretive to where I will not compliment women anymore. Um, I, I, I'm like, it's just like, 
it's unthinkable to even say that a woman is attractive anymore, even when, even when asked. You know, it's like, it's like I got some kind of mental block against it now, and then I just like either just laugh, weird like, or or just dodge the question. Uh, but anyway. So the next day, you know, okay, so I'm avoiding this girl and all that. And this goes on for several days. Then I believe it is on the 6th. I'm going to have to go back and look and see what app, uh, see what exactly what it was. Anyway, um, well, um, the, uh, you know, Clan Master's mom kept coming in there every week after that and trying to instigate more shit with the managers to get me fired and all that, you know, I mean, why else would she be knocking on the office door, which she never did before, but now all of a sudden she is doing it at least once a week, and she had told um, Bell Bottom's uh, parents that I was, you know, interested in Bell Bottom, oh my gosh, and it was on the 6th or whatever I believe it was, or was it on the 4th of uh, September of uh, 2011? Five minutes till close in this place. And here I am, I'm starting to lock some of the doors and all that. You know, the evening closing duties. And here, you know, and then um, Bell Bottom's parents were talking. And this is how I found out they were Bell Bottom's parents is because of what they were talking about. And I overheard them talk to the manager at the store <clears throat> where I worked and where Bell Bottom worked also and where some of this stuff happened where you know, clan master would basically display ownership types of behavior patterns, ownership of bell bottom in a public place, and all that. Well, um, clan ma I mean, uh, bell bottom's mom was talking to the manager, and, and I overheard. All of a sudden, it, it what got my attention is I overheard this lady saying, uh, it, it "Like, like, how'd she put it? It's like." You're like, he he had better leave my 19 year old daughter alone if he knows it's good for him, and just like said it fairly loud, and all that. And of course, had a man with her and that sort of thing. This is five minutes till close, and, and they made a big fucking fuss of it. And then a couple days later, I come into work, and here is the human resource manager. And the the loss prevention manager, and both of them are high level people in this company. They're they're at the um, they call them vice presidents, but they're basically like it's like a director type of position, not like a CEO. They're subordinate to a CEO, but they're they're very high level toward the top. Um, you know, and uh, but anyway, they're both sitting in there and they're in, there, uh, in the office, and they they had me come in there and talk to them about the whole situation. I felt so fucking, like, humiliated in this sort of thing. Uh, not just because of how they were treating me, but how the whole situation was. Oh, and keep in mind, the whole humiliation thing. And this what this is what also happened to the disposable human doing. And this is what we noticed, this pattern where these women that, that pretend to be victims or whatever, what they'll do is they will, and, and you should be careful for this, what they will try to do is they will try to get you to admit guilt and basically acknowledge how would you describe it like what what they do is they try to get you to apologize and then yeah, your apology want you to apologize because your apology there by apologizing you are admitting guilt even if there is none exactly what it is is it's by apologizing you are therefore legitimizing their claim as if it really did exist and it it basically is an admission of guilt or, you know, you are acknowledged, basically it's a, 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 it, they manipulate you into, um, well, I, I guess you could say admitting that you did it or admitting or fessing up to something and to basically take responsibility and by, you know, and what you should do is just not apologize. You should just fucking cut ties and ignore. And then if they fucking pester you about it, confront them with as much truthful shit as possible and counter their shit um, with whatever it takes, you know, with evidence, whatever. 
And do not apologize for this shit because by apologizing to it, they're making you acknowledge involvement or participation or you know what I'm saying? They're 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 making you um basically um claim that you did it. That that you know, they're they're making you um uh claim that you did what they're accusing you of. And because Clan Master's mom told me over the phone on the night of August thirty first of two thousand eleven said now you're now you're gonna have to make a public apology and all this because what you did you spread that rumor and and it went all over the internet and all over Facebook that 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 Clam Master and and Bell Bottom are lesbians now that's not true they're not lesbians they're just good friends and and all this other stuff and well I know they hold hands but that's you know that's just how girls are. And that's sort of all this fucking shaming fucking bullshit. And, you know, now, I hope we don't, I hope we don't get excommunicated from the Jehovah's Witness Church over this whole thing. And, and you really caused a mess. And that's what made me so fucking depressed. Is they told me that I basically made the fucking sky fall. And that somehow, like, my actions of being interested in this girl made they acted they exaggerated it as if it made the earth fall off of its axis and collide with the sun mm-hmm. and <clears throat> and this is the shame these are the tactics that women used uh well they it, there wasn't any men involved in this i mean it was all women doing this shit uh you know from clan master to you know clan master's mom to bell bottom's mom and all that, <clears throat> and it's all started as a way to keep me away from Bell Bottom, um, and you know. Anyway, all this there's a lot more shit that happened, but it just take for fucking ever to explain it. <clears throat> so that's why I'm not gonna explain it. Maybe in another video or another rant or whatever. Well, the point is, so I'm in the office talking to these two vice presidents and all that. And they're bringing up, you know, they say, now if you, and here's what they said. They said, you know, these are vice presidents of the company that I work for. They're high level people. Basically the equivalent of a director um, of a division of a company or whatever. Anyway, and one of them is the human resource manager. And he told me, he's an authority figure within the, the organization, the company, the, the whatever, the entity. And he tells me that if some, he tells me that if you pursue somebody who's not interested in you, that constitutes sexual harassment. And I, and that day, I think it was September seventh, two thousand eleven. I was in danger of losing my job for sexual harassment because of this whole fucking issue, and like. And then also for asking somebody else out on a date twice because they didn't even say no the first time. They didn't even say no at all. It's just like, uh, I'll talk to some some other woman. I'm like, it's like, you know, it's like, um, uh, you know, it's like, hey, how would you like to go out on a date? Well, they didn't say anything. Okay, and see, and the reason reason why I'm bringing this up because they brought it up, you know, in that in the office and all that when they were grilling me uh, like I was some fucking like scourge upon the face of humanity and anyway and they didn't seem like they were trying to be mean they were being really professional but the laws and regulations of business and society and all that basically put them in a, in, in the position to where they got to treat me this way and <clears throat> anyway so um you know, and then the, this 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 person I asked out on a date, they ain't say anything. So like like the next day or whatever, I'm like, hey, I mean, I'm like, I ain't get an answer from from you. How would you like to go out on a date? They ain't say anything else. They just pretend like they you know like they didn't hear it. And that's why I asked a second time because see, I you know me and the disposable human doing, we understand what no means and we need to hear it. Okay, 
so that we know what our safe bounds are. We know what's expected is expected of us. Well, we didn't know what silence means because we don't use it. When somebody asks us a question, we give an answer. Yep. You know? Yeah, and and so anyway, and I was facing fucking sexual harassment charges for his shit. Um, and I was actually told that if you pursue somebody who's not interested in you, that constitutes sexual harassment. And that, and that silence means no and all that. And so basically all these indirect methods of this means that, so therefore you're a sexual harasser. Um... And oh, go. well, anyway, I'm almost gonna wrap. I'm gonna wrap this up here, Chrissy. Anyway, um, so um, anyway, not. I mean, it's a few more months later, and this girl got fired from the job for I forget what reason that she got. You know, Bell Bottom got fired from the job, and I really didn't have to worry too much. But you know, they really tried to impose a bunch. And then later on, like I think in this year in 2012, they tried to impose a bunch of consequences on uh, the disposable human being. Or, yeah, or the disposable human doing just because he was flirting or whatever or got, displayed some affection with Bell Bottom at, at a different time and all that. And, and see, he didn't get in a bunch of trouble because, you know, he didn't work with her. He didn't have very many ties with her and all that. But the point is, um, they tried to. Yeah, they tried to fucking burn him like they burned me, and it didn't work because the, the circumstances weren't the same. But the point is, they fucking tried. And, you know, like, if this bitch would just admit that she's a fucking lesbian and be all open about this shit, and it's like, yeah, this is my girlfriend, it'd be all fine. Nobody would really care because this this kind of stuff is fairly common where we live, and it wouldn't be a big problem, but because they were secretive about it, then all these guys became interested in bell bottom like they typically would and then they didn't know that there was a relationship going on that they were supposedly infringing on anyway and uh, but uh, yeah and we both and I faced my death on that night of August 31st 2011 and um, that set me on the path for for now and 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 recently the dis the disposable human doing he he didn't get to the point in which he put a gun up to his face but he thought about it didn't you say you thought about well, taking I basically it? came to the decision that if someone's gonna try and ruin my life I'm not gonna let him do it I'll die before that happens exactly that that's how it was for me also I'm basically accepting the fact that if if within the next couple days like when it first happened I thought that you know immediately thought that sirens were gonna be Ringing and car, you know, squad cars gonna rush my house or something for some reason. That's what I thought, and I, I was, I basically had prepared that, you know, I may have to die sometime soon in, in order to escape the wrath of this poop mouth. But for me, I actually loaded up a gun and pointed it to my head, and had my finger on the trigger and was like, just, you know, fraction of an inch from death. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much because, I mean, a half a millimeter at a time, I squeeze this trigger. I mean, this trigger of this pistol. And, I mean, I would just squeeze it a half a millimeter, just a little bit more, just a little bit more pressure, point at my face. And, like, no, I mean, no man should have to go through that shit. Nobody should have to go through that shit just because of, of how females act. And just so this bitch you know, clan master can save some face and not be fucking bitched at by her mom. And this really did happen to me. This is my story. And, and there are so many other stories of what fucking pisses me off. People do not fucking know where I've been mentally, in my mind, and, and in my shoes and how it affected me. I mean, I fucking faced my death. I was ready to fucking pull the trigger and fucking kill myself. And nobody needs to know about this shit. And the only reason I'm even talking about it is because, hey, guys need to watch out. Men need to be careful. And they need to be, watch out for the fucking pitfalls that will for sure ensnare them unless they're wise and careful and make careful decisions. And, I mean... You can't, you cannot live happily ever after pursuing women. 
you, you might get lucky from time to time, but eventually you're going to get fucked. You know, eventually you're going to find out that one of those chambers in the cylinder of the revolver is fucking loaded, and you cannot pull the trigger and get an empty cylinder forever. You know, yeah. because dating is like fucking Russian roulette on getting your ass locked up. You know what it I'm is. saying? Yeah, it is. All right. Until next time, I'm the uh, I'm, I'm man slave, and this along is with a me is disposable human doing and Petson. And we are the duo that uh, of validation warfare uh, YouTube channel. Um, so until next time, you need Petson. <laughs>